For those who don't know, grandkids, great-grandkids, and great-great-great-grandkids, I'm Govi Martin. I was born in District 6 a long, long time ago, 1939. And I had a fabulous childhood. My father was in a singing game. Him being a Muslim, he used to sing in churches as well for his friends' weddings and that type of occasions. He was Ahmad Martin. And I was Gobi, named that by my mother. She called me that. And as I grew up and started flirting with English speaking girls, they converted that Gobi to Gobi. And that name stuck. Up till today, I am still Gobi Martin. Well, my singing area started right there at home while my mother was washing the washing in a big tub with cold water. She used to wash that washing. And while she was washing, she gave a performance of her vocal talents. And I was influenced by this and that. She used to tell me, Listen, I'm going to teach you a song. And you sing it. And then she would say, sing Sunny Boy, or My Mammy, or California, Here I Come, and many, many others. And these were all songs that was, we never heard it on our Springbok radio that we had those days. That was all that we had. And we had to learn and sing from the radio whatever was available to us, which was very little. But this would put, prove to be beneficial to me, especially at the later stage in life. I used to learn those songs. And in 1954, when the Jolson story was released, she gave me money to go to the Star Bicycle. It cost us sixpence, six pennies to get into that bicycle and watch that movie. And as the songs appeared, one after the other, this Jolson, L. Jolson, Larry Fox played the part of Al Johnson. And as it ap appeared, as he performed it one by one, one after the other, I realized that I knew most of those songs that he was performing there from listening to the old lady while she was doing a washing in the backyard. So, It wasn't long after that when I left Sally Dolly Primary School in Freer Street, where I schooled at first, that I went to Golding. The, the red brick building is still standing today. I believe that the white regime that we had at the time had a plan for the school. And I auditioned with a song called My Mammy. It was the hit song of the day. 
The coons used to sing it. Everybody else at home used to sing the song. And I loved it. It was like a, a beautiful song. Everything seemed lovely when you start to roam, etc., etc. But one of those teachers, his name was Clarence Reed, was a magnificent pianist. And he decided that no, Mammy was okay, but I had a voice, he felt, to sing other types of songs. And he taught me the song, I'll Take You Home Again, Kathleen and Ramona. Ramona, I hear the mission bells above, etc. It became a hit. Both those songs that I sang in the city hall there in Cape Town. And uh, I was just popular after that. And so I joined the Klopse at a very young age. I loved it. I don't care what anybody has to say about the clubs, but it was entertaining. We used to go and sit in Hanover Street from four o'clock in the mornings on our benches to wait for them to come and do their parades up and down. I sang a song called Mama. When the twilight is gone, and the songbirds are singing When the twilight is gone Gone, gone She'll come back in my arms And here in my heart You'll stay While I pray That's my prayer My prayer is to sing similar songs like that High caliber songs and I beat Joseph Gabriels. Early 1960s, one of those years. I then went and won him again a second time in the Lakshrama. Joseph Gabriel got into the train at Salt River on the way to Weinberg. And some people recognized him and said, to him, Joe, where are you going? And he said, listen, I'm just going to the Lakshrama to go win a prize. Lo and behold, he never won that prize, I did. I became the first Mr. Entertainer that I know that other people were running around calling themselves that at later dates. Mr. Entertainer, this and that thing. They weren't competition for me in those days. I used to have a voice similar to the late John Gary, singing in those octaves and holding your breath for long periods in the, in the song. I, I, I mean, it was just too entertaining for me to do these things. Enjoyed my music in those days. And I, I was very, very, very popular. And then, of course, I, land, I landed up in Durban in a nightclub called The Savoy. There was David Bessman. There was Zane Adams. Tali Peterson wasn't on the scene even in those years that I'm talking about now. Talib said to me one night, you know Gobi? Many years later when he came and visited me in, in Woodstock, he said, when I saw you that night and heard what you did, I said to my father, Buya, when I grow up, I want to be like that man. 
That was an accolade for me. I never heard him tell his father that. However, however, he told that to me personally, face to face. He liked the reputation that I had and the singing ability. And I was a sort of a role model to him from amongst the colored people here in Cape Town. And I like that. I appreciated that. However, there were many others that I competed against. Cyril Valentine, Freddie Isaacs, Freddie Johnson, very, very good singers, all of them. But I was the three octave voice at that stage. I did very well. So things were happening for me. And then I went to Durban. I worked in the Savoy Hotel. Red Lantern nightclub for a long time, two, three years. Yes. And I just enjoyed working every night, being admired, being put on a pedestal and that type of thing. You know, the ego comes into it also and you like what you're doing. You're enjoying it. And I loved entertaining people standing on stage each and every night, night after night after night. However, there were other things happening back in Cape Town. And people knew that I would like to be a part of it. So they let me know, listen, we're putting together a group here for the Golden City Dixies. By that time, Danny Williams had already gone to London and making his name over there. However, I like to say this. Danny Williams was sitting in on the rehearsal of ours in the Athlone Hotel. And each and every artist was doing his thing with the band. And then I came and did my thing with the band. And Danny Williams actually got up out of his seat where he was relaxing. And he applauded. And I loved that. Because I knew here was a singer that's recognizing another one of his skill. There you go. That was my only run in with Danny. I never worked with him on a show. I worked with Zane Adams. I met Zane on that show, Golden City, Texas. I admired him for his ability to be Mr. Matt Monroe. Born free, as free as the wind blows. He used to do it beautifully. And uh, yeah, many other songs that were sung by all of us. There was another singer on that show, Sally Davids, with a beautiful tenor. I used to sing Irish ballads on that song, show. Yeah. Number one was A Little Bit of Heaven. Sure, a little bit of heaven fell from out the sky one day and it nestled on the ocean in a spot so far away, and so on, and so on, and so on. A beautiful song. 
brought down the house every night. Every night I sang a little bit of heaven and it brought the house down. For the whole season and the next season as well. As long as there was Golden City Dixies, I was told to sing that song <laughs> by Mr. Fred Langford. Fred Langford was the organizer of that show, manager, boss, everything. 